Welcome to another installment of Sales Moguls, guys. And today here, we're super excited to review what's finally a tool that we've really been waiting for for a long time. At least I have. I don't know about you, David. So much to share. I mean, we've reviewed many other powerhouse tools. And I think, you know, we might we might be having a heavyweight tournament with Cognizant coming up here. It's been one of the key players in the market. I think if, you, if you're generally on the lookout for sales tools, inadvertently, you will sort of stumble across or stumble upon this name, uh, Cognizant. No, but they do a lot of uh, outreach and, and, and a lot of, I would say, informational and educational content. From what, from what I've found, which is really exciting, something about, which I haven't seen too much of with other um, sales tools or lead enrichment tools. They actually do cold calling seminars. They do lead outreach seminars. I've even seen a, a few of their YouTube uh, episodes know. as well. They also do a lot of, not just seminars, they actually cold call it a lot. They cold call you. I think. Oh, they cold call, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they I put haven't been seminars into, into action. I was cold called from a seminar while watching a seminar. So I had the loop. Inception. I would say I would give an eight out of ten. Um, they were quite intuitive. They asked the right kind of questions. Once my inquiry was sent in, the call was within another day. I was even in another time zone, so I was in Mexico at the time. So I got their North American sales team and the uh, the SDR set up quick chat. And then I was straight into the account executive. Very happy with the with the initial buying experience. I don't know if it's uh, well. It, so clearly, it's not a time zone thing. But for me, it was a bit harder. And I think I, I said this to you on the phone. We were, we were chatting a few days earlier. It was a bit mm. hard to get the demo, even to get them on the same time sort of as me. I give them an eight out of ten. They worked really well together. I just had a call with their sales manager who joined for the account executive. And he, he was really understanding. He was really hearing what I was saying. He only jumped in when he needed to. But he also, you know, was quite transparent. He was like, listen, we want to get a deal with you. Let's, uh, let's, let's give you, he gives you the breathing space. And that's something I noticed. He doesn't try to answer every question straight away. He listens to what you're saying. If you're asking, if you're giving them a statement or asking them a question that they can look at later on, they're hearing you. And that's something, I think that's a theme that I'm noticing is some people hear you, some people can listen to you, but are they hearing what you're saying? And some people just want to jump back straight away with a response. So I was really happy with the sales team. Uh, they really did some research before in the meetings and came with some ideas because, again, we're finding a certain target market. And for all you guys out there, remember that it's not always going to be simple as I want to say a logistics manager this. No, you also have a company type that might not have all the different parameters listed there as well. And they were really good at hearing our, our needs and trying to find a solution to that. But once we sort of crossed that hurdle of getting the meetings and once we went into demo, I think the rep did a good job of showing me what the platform was. He made it really clear. He really also extended support saying, hey, I'm setting up this trial for you. I'm okay with setting up a trial for you for like a week and I'm here to support you during this trial. And I'm going to unlock all of these features. We can, we can go through the, some of these features when I, when I take us through the demo. But he was supportive, so they get some points. But overall, my experience um, was challenging at the beginning and that impacts my score. And that's why I would give it a six out of 10. They were really adamant about their price and they didn't seem flexible with their price. Maybe it's because of the stage of negotiation that I was at and maybe it was too early stage for them and they didn't want to give too much away because it was too early in the negotiation stage. But I mm -hmm. did also mention to them that I'm going to be an enterprise, what I believe is, is an enterprise level customer with close to 50 seats per month. And at that level, I think that commands a good starting price. And I didn't get that starting price. And that left me feeling a bit sour or unhappy, whatever you want to call it. So hence, I would give it a 7 out of 10. Wow, that is, uh, I just did the quick maths of 50 seats at the price that they give. That could possibly be almost someone's quota. You, you would be making someone's, not to give away too much, it'd be over a million. It would cost, with their current pricing. Who knows if that would change? But with their current pricing, that's, yeah, that's a lot. So uh, you'd be almost making someone's definitely if, if we go by the statistic that a salesperson needs to make four times their salary back at a minimum, yep. then uh, you might be making the whole team's quota. So I would give them for me price negotiation. I give them an eight out of 10. Again, 
could be it's a new market for them in the Nordics. So they've been a little bit nicer. So as I go through this journey, I'm noticing that the more transparent and upfront you are with things, and the more upfront you are with your team and your company's growth, then then I found that they were a lot more nicer with the way they would negotiate with me. So I'll and just as them. a just as a benchmark, you said that if you do the rough maths on 50 states a month, that's about a million dollars in revenue. So how much are you looking at for your company just to see the level of the difference? I just want to, I'm just curious to see. Uh, I would be like 10%, six figures. I'd be maybe over a hundred thousand. Yeah, training on morning was really sort of simple and straightforward for me. Um, it's such a clean platform and you'll see that in the demo that it's, it's quite easy and intuitive to learn. I was simply given the access. I was not trained and everything else is sort of self-help. Um, videos and onboarding, there's enough stuff out there on the internet if you want to learn how to use Cognizant. So I would give it an eight out of 10. No, cool. Um, I'd give it the same eight out of 10. I think there's a lot of content out there on how to use it. Uh, you know, one thing that would give it a 10 for me is if, excuse me, if there was a live onboarding kind of design as is this your first time click here if you want to do intense searches click here that would be pretty cool a live intuitive onboarding but uh, I'll give an 8 out of 10 in terms of uh, getting enough information getting enough support if we just use it for what we're comparing it for which is sales tool lead enrichment I think it does pretty well I think does it do everything that zoom info does no you're not going to do everything that zoom info does does it do everything you'll need? If we use it in our kind of framework, then I give it, and then it does, yes. I think it has really good features. I think it compares in terms of uh, product is quite high. I think in terms of the customer support and the customer success onboarding, it, it, it also compares quite well. So I give it an eight out of 10. Interesting that you say that you compare that to Zoom Info. So it's, uh, is that you sort of alluding to the fact that maybe you think that Zoom Info is like the, the real benchmark, is like the pinnacle? I, I think that if you're going to compare, again, we're, we're, we're not deep diving too much in the product just yet, but if you're going to compare what they what both of them offer, then I think they compare a lot. Obviously, depending on your different territories, then I think you have to take into account that Cognizant might have more valid data if you're in, let's say, the European segment. If you're also comparing it to GDPR compliancy, they're both GDPR compliant, even though Cognizant also does make claims that they they do or they do say, so make claims that they do uh, check more against non-contact lists as well. Whereas Zoom, they claim that Zoom Info doesn't. So, you know, you can go into the nitty gritty details of things, but on the surface, I would say Zoom Info is a good benchmark to have. They've been around for over 20 years. So I would say for me, you want to compare against in terms of the feature walls and what Cognizant is doing, you compare it to that. Well, I'll compare up, it matches the likes of Zoom Info. And when I compare down, Sorry, Lucia, I'm sorry. But when I look at other platforms that are not as good, this one punches way above its weight and it does a great job. So Cognizant for me is a strong 8 out of 10 against competition. Mm. So now we're going to move into our customer experience. Uh, Abby, getting started, what would you give it? I mean, for me, it was a bit challenging. As I said earlier, I don't want to repeat myself, but it was... It was not straightforward experience for me, so I would give it a 6 out of 10. Yeah, I, I would give it an actually 8 out of 10. As I said, they were quite supportive and the trial, getting that set up and up and running. In terms of getting started with the with the product as well, they're, they're very, they make everything a lot more frictionless from my end, so I give it, yeah, an 8 out of 10. Okay, nice, good to know. What about the account management experience? So uh, when you were with them as a customer or a trial customer, what was the experience like? Very supportive, um, very checking up on me. I just got an email myself from one of my account executives and he, he, he just sent me an email informing me that, uh, you know, I'm looking at potentially another system, a tool as well. And he just said to me, hey, listen, uh, here's a really cool article uh, that compares to the other systems that you might be looking at. So they're very informative, very informational, trying to help you through the process as well. And they're quite solution orientated. So it's an eight out of 10 for me. What about you? 
Yeah, it's actually the same for me, eight out of 10, because uh, I mean, of course, I've, I've said enough that it was hard getting the demo and hard getting the trial set up. But once that was done, I like the fact that they keep checking in on you. I like the fact that even though the demo, the trial period is really short, like I, by the way, my demo, my trial period was just seven days, which I think is yeah. quite short, um, especially if they're like holidays in the middle or something unexpected comes in and then you're off sick for like two days. It's hard. Nevertheless, they did check in and they did make sure that, okay, this guy's using the platform. In fact, the account manager said to me that he's going to be checking in even on the back end to see if I've actually used the product. Uh, which, is, which is good to know. He was hands-on and he was proactive. We don't have to go too much into it. I give this one an 8 out of 10 for many reasons said before. Abby? Same for me, 8 out of 10, just like account management. For asking this one, I've been roaring to go with this one. I give it the data accuracy an 8 out of 10. It's quite strong. Although you still need to double check things with LinkedIn, um, it does give you really good breakdown of keywords within titles, within companies. What I mean by that is if you're looking up certain company types, you can actually set up key keywords that might relate to these company types as well. Uh, it's always never going to be perfect, but it's really good for account-based level. Uh, so if you need to come with the expectations that's always going to be perfect, then as we've discussed in many of these it's not going to be like that. The only thing, I, the reason why I wouldn't give it necessary 10 is if you are scaling your operations, hence you're using integrations to go from Cognizant to Salesforce or HubSpot to Yesware or to do you know automated emailings, you may find some errors that you may need to fix. But on a whole, uh, this I'm really happy with the data accuracy and I'm really happy you know, with the output that it gives you. It doesn't just give you, you know, it doesn't give you a filter system, which another one gave me, which does break things down, but does not give me enough accounts in that filter system. So what I mean by that is one of them, for example, said that it can tell you how many companies have 10 vehicles or more. But when it did that, it only actually had five companies, which we know is not true. My rating for data accuracy for Cognizant are pretty high. I actually thought this tool was quite accurate. Given the fact that I'm in, I, I operate in some markets that are not digitally savvy, some markets that are not sort of mobile first economies mm. or tech savvy countries. So compared to a lot of the tools, I would give it a really strong rating. Um, I saw more emails being accurate and more phone numbers being accurate. Of course, I verified some of these phone numbers and, and email addresses using a third party verification platform. And I was pleased. I was surprised. Cognizant took me by surprise and, and I was positively surprised. And that's why I give it a strong 8 out of 10 for data accuracy. Okay, very simple, straightforward for me. Strong 8 out of 10. And the reason is I love a clear user experience. I love that whole sort of Uber experience, which is um, if you've used Uber and I'm a huge fan of Uber, it's very black and white, two color themes, not too much happening. That Those are the two themes, not many colors on here. And I love that about Cognizant. We'll see that in the demo, that it's such an easy platform to navigate. The benchmark for UX for me is Dun & Bradstreet. They are the benchmark. I, I would say they, they were the creme de la creme of benchmarking. So I'm going to use that as my baseline. I give it a 6 out of 10, to be honest. It's very hard to put my finger on it because it does have a good layout. But I would say using all the features and the way that it's designed it's, uh, I would say it's not as intuitive in terms of editing while utilizing the intent search on top of your revenue searches or filtering systems. You have to kind of figure out how to combine the two. Uh, it could also be that I'm not as tech savvy as Abby. The unique selling point, and I think we could open this up to a bit of a discussion, is they their unique selling point is nobody has, as Donald, as D. Trump would say, nobody does telephone numbers like we do it. and And that's that's kind of their uh, their power statement is this. So I would say in terms of their unique selling point, if you base it off that, I don't see them as two different to Zoom Info. You, yeah. you really have to get very technical with the way that they are. You have to really deep dive into the numbers because they all claim to have 95% or 90%. Everyone but does, yeah. yeah, in terms of their unique selling point, I don't see a big difference in my day to day. Maybe I need to do more and more and more and more uh, emails or calls 
but I, I wouldn't say in my day to day I've seen a huge difference if you base it off what they're marketing and base it off what their you know features are. I actually have a contradicting theory on unique selling, unique unique selling point, um, and I think the unique selling point is that for Cognizant, less is more. They're trying to do less things, and that is becoming unique to them. Mm. If you look at another another platform, you'll see Zoom Info. Uh, they are trying to do more, and they're trying to bundle many features on top of each other, all like together, mm. and trying to give you a one-stop solution. But what what Cognizant is doing is that they're picking a select, they're picking a path, or they're picking a feature, and they mm. want to build as much product depth in that feature. And become mm. the masters of that feature. That for mm. me is their unique selling point. They don't do anything else. That for me mm. is huge. Um, yeah. And they did a pretty good job of it. So I, I would give them, I would give them a strong eight out of ten for USP. Well, I hope you guys liked the video. We put in a lot of work, and thanks a lot as always for watching. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, we'd love the support. We love the acknowledgement. And if you want us to put up more videos or different tools that you think you might find useful or you could benefit from, send them over to us. Send us an email. Put your comments in um, in the comment section, and um, let us know what we can do next and help us improve. Thanks again for watching, and uh, see you again at Sales Moments. Prospect again, it's nothing unique about this uh, about this piece of the of the two, and we know because I actually face this problem when I'm when I have a list of contacts, at least the, the industry that I'm in, I see a lot of people leave, and that's normal in regular industries, but it seems to be higher in the industry that I'm in. You can kind of manage your whole team with these lists. So if you're up to a level where you know exactly your ICP and your territories, and you know exactly where your team's going to be working out of, then you can really you know, put your team on the front forward with these lists. For me, there's a huge return on investment because it encompasses all of this. And okay. Abby, for you? For me, um, I'd actually say one point lesser.